Reactivity Series by kscience.com Reactivity means how quickly or easily something reacts. Gold and silver jewellery are worn by people every single day at all times. This is because they have no reaction of water when you place them in water. This is because gold and silver have a low reactivity. They do not react with water. So gold and silver can be used as jewellery due to their low reactivity. To understand reactivity in more detail, let's now take a look at how an iron bike reacts with water. If a bike is left out in the rain overnight or over just a few weeks, there won't be any chemical reactions visible. However, there will be a slow reaction with water over months and years when it will be evident the iron has rusted causing the iron to become an orangey brown colour and this takes place over months or even years so we can see it is a very slow chemical reaction. So the more reactive a metal is, the less useful it is to be used in everyday objects. Let's now take a look at group 1 metals such as lithium, sodium and potassium to see how they react with water and compare this to gold, silver and iron. Group 1 metals react instantly with water. Where lithium fizzes, sodium melts into a ball, and potassium burns with a lilac flame. So just from placing these metals in water, it's very clear which metals are more reactive and less reactive. So group 1 metals are the most reactive, and silver and gold are the least reactive. If we do this to a lot of metals, we can come up with an order of metals showing their reactivity and we call this the reactivity series. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. The reactivity series is a list of elements ordered by their reactivity, depending on how they react with water, steam, and dilute acid. The most reactive elements are at the top and the least reactive elements are at the bottom. The reactivity series starts with potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, Carbon, iron, tin, lead, hydrogen, copper, silver, and finishes with gold, which is the least reactive element at the bottom. The elements with the highest reactivity react with water the most vigorously. Potassium down to calcium have very vigorous reactions with water. Observations include small explosions, lilac flame and melts into a ball, along with fizzing as well. That's why these elements are the most reactive elements, as they have the most vigorous reactions with water compared to the elements below. Magnesium down to iron have very slow reactions with water. Magnesium reacting with water takes several days for the reaction to completely finish. Cans made of aluminium react very slowly with water, sometimes taking many months depending on the conditions, as too does iron. Iron rusts over many months or years, forming an orangey-brown colour on the surface. Tin and lead are less reactive compared to the metals above, as they do not react with water, but they do react with steam. This is hot water vapour and these are small reactions with steam. Whereas magnesium to iron are more reactive than tin and lead as they have very slow reactions with water. Tin and lead do not react with water, they only have small reactions with steam. Copper, silver and gold have no reactions with water. Copper pipes therefore are very useful at transferring water from one place to another and gold and silver are very useful as jewellery as they do not react with water when someone has a shower or does the washing.
It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We can also understand the reactivity of these elements depending on how they react with dilute acids. Potassium down to lithium explode when they react with dilute acids. Now if we go back to these elements and how they react with water, they have very small explosions and that's only if there are large chunks reacting with water. Whereas potassium down to lithium, they have bigger explosions even if small chunks are used, and it's very dangerous. When the elements calcium down to iron react with dilute acids, there is fizzing. This is due to hydrogen gas given off, and the salt is also formed. If there is a lot of fizzing, this means the metal is more reactive. And if there is little fizzing, this means the metal is less reactive. For example, calcium will have more fizzing compared to the metals below, and iron will have the least amount of fizzing compared to the metals above, so is the least reactive. Tin and lead have slow reactions with warm acids, so are less reactive compared to the metals above. And copper, silver and gold have no reaction even with warm dilute acids. Hydrogen has been placed in this reactivity series to show how metals below hydrogen do not react with acids. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to learn how to write equations for when metals react with cold water, steam, and dilute acids. When metals and cold water react, the word equation is a metal plus water reacts to form a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. But of course, this does not include metals which do not react with water, such as copper, silver, and gold. Pause the video now to see if you can write a balanced equation for when sodium reacts with water and the answers will follow. When metals react with steam, the word equation is a metal plus steam reacts to form a metal oxide and hydrogen gas. Pause the video now to see if you can write a balanced equation with state symbols for when lead reacts with steam. To help you, the chemical formula of lead oxide is PBO. When metals react with dilute acids, the word equation is a metal plus dilute acids reacts to form a salt and hydrogen gas. Pause the video now to see if you can write a balanced equation with state symbols for when zinc reacts with hydrochloric acids. To help you, the chemical formula of the salt is ZnCl2. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow.
Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.